today and tomorrow. The noble art of self-defense is perhaps never more nobly demonstrated than in judo. Correct modern term for the more widely known word, jiu-jitsu. Hi, this is Shadi, and today we're going to be discussing 1930s judo, both from randori standpoint and self-defense standpoint. From a randori standpoint, I saw a lot of things that were missing uh, back then compared to today's Olympic and World Championship Judo, the high level that we've reached. But when it comes to self-defense, it was much more richer as you would uh, imagine. So today we will look at the multiple attackers, not just your regular uh, single attacks, but uh, how they kept things lively and constantly on the move and also see the things that they lacked in terms of uh, randori, but also the good things like uh, the engagement uh, in Neiwaza. So we're going to be looking at 1930s all throughout the 50s, which is not completely you know, different. It's, I would say, the same judo. So the first thing that we're going to look at is how they quickly establish the grips and proceed to do randori and then hits him with this beautiful Yoko Gake. Look at the engagement in Neiwaza, constantly ready. And here you can see Yoko Gake. It's beautiful. It's rarely done. Yoko Gake is a sacrificing throw where you hook the outside of the foot and then you sacrifice yourself sideways and taking them down for Ippon. Um, it is found in Nage no Kata in the Yoko Sutemi Waza part. Here you can see uh, in Randori you would imagine it's going to look much less graceful as your opponent is resisting as you just saw in the randori of 1937 i believe or 1938 so i want to take a look at the gripping again this is from the 1964 olympics and you can see they just immediately establish the grips and then they proceed to try to throw uh, each other in today's world as you can imagine this is an impossibility as there's just so much that goes into grip fighting today from tactics from different styles of gripping uh, from different approaches, different tricks into baiting someone into a position or how to escape a particular position, many backup plans. So you would imagine that just gripping sleeve and lapel and proceeding to do it, just like you saw in the 1930s and the 1964 Olympics, I would say it's impossible. Uh, if you just watch Inoue Kose here, just having so many tactics against so many different grips or how to get the lapel, how to get the sleeve, lapel feeds, uh, in jiu-jitsu and judo, lapel feed is a completely different thing, by the way. So, as you can imagine, this is one thing that judo has clearly evolved in, and that is the fierce grip fighting that is happening today uh, in terms of getting the grips. There are guys that are just so good that they have all their grips on you, and you can't even put your hand on them. This is how much the game has evolved. So, the second thing I want to discuss in those old randori is the readiness to engage in Neiwaza and here this Dallahiva hook. Looking at it from a judo perspective, not from BJJ perspective, Dallahiva seems very instinctive uh, from the amount of Sutemiwaza that you do in judo and how you explode in suddenly into it uh, as you are trying to throw someone. So the first ever uh, documented uh, De La Hiva lesson here, how it is, explains how to hook from the outside and lace your leg is from this book from 1926. It's called A New Style of Judo by Kanemitsu Yaichibe. It is still in Japanese till this day, but you can see the photo on the right. It is a De La Hiva guard. Unfortunately, they did not take a photo from the other side where you can clearly see where the action is happening. So, in my opinion, it is a very instinctive position, but... Uh, to work it to where it is today, how they did it in BJJ, obviously it needs a lot of crafting, decades of crafting, but it is not completely dead in Judo, as you can see here, Maruyama Joshiro defends against Abe after a failed Tomoe Nage. You can see Hooks grabs the heel and tries to go to the side, not so much in the front. Now let's take a look at self-defense drills and demonstrations. They seem very lively and also they have thought of the concept of multiple opponents seems a little bit like your mob movie where guys are gripping you and one guy is taking care of the victim so this is clearly different from the aikijutsu slash aikido um, method of doing these multiple opponent scenarios where aikido or daitoryu aikijujutsu they're demonstrating more the harmony the technique the the breathing etc and not so much the fighting aspect or combative aspect this is clearly serving a different purpose uh, 
than the judo one this one seems a little bit more uh realistic than the first judo one where you see the guy is constantly on the move constantly trying to keep distance and here getting a few judo throws for the crowd but in terms of constantly being on the move and constantly keeping distance and keeping you know shielding with the stuff that's around you or with another person seems like the most likely scenario um but this begs the question was it something they always practiced for example here you can see in this 1912 demonstration uh, they're constantly attacking they're constantly moving it's very lively even though it's a demonstration you can easily see someone that's very skilled pull this off against untrained people who are just aggressive and they're just lunging as you would see in normal street uh, scenarios um, here you can see attacks and then sends him away but after that you would see attack after attack from multiple guys um, this seems like uh, something they did a lot back in the day and again this is something i'm asking is it something that they constantly did because if they did that would be really uh, amazing because this is what uh, we lack today the olympics the ijf has taken over so much of judo that we forget this part and we associate self-defense with very much static kata and it's becoming very boring so much so that no one wants to do it and we've lost sight of the true message of judo which is actually self-defense growing your mind and constantly learning and finally the third level as Jigoro Kano puts it which is making a society a better place so uh, in terms of conceptualizing judo yes we have strayed away a lot if you read mind over muscle you would see that a lot is not being applied of what Kano actually would have wanted so uh, this is a very I would say this is a very sad thing to be honest because uh, I a lot of you because when i put that poll and i asked are you in it for you know competing or you want to do self def do it for self-defense and defending yourself a lot of people said i'm in it for self-defense i'm in it because confidence you know being constantly on the lookout and uh, always being you know ready in case something happens and this is not what we're training for randori and competing is taking control of judo and also so many rules that just in my opinion make zero sense so if you have anything else to add uh, i ask you please leave it down below and like this video it's the easiest way to support me and also consider supporting me on patreon i have exclusive content for the patrons only like uh, behind the scenes full podcast and special videos only for the patrons i post there about once a week um, my main content will always be on youtube but you don't feel obliged uh, but your support would mean greatly so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening